Evan, head of engineering for RM Stator. Today we're going to take a look at our new bypass voltage regulator system for the Triumph Thruxton Bonneville America 900 motor. So this is an 07 Thruxton 900 that's one of my bikes. We're going to show this on um, and like I said it'll fit quite a few other bikes. Um, you'll have to check our fitment list. I don't know them all off the top of my head but like I said for sure Bonneville and America they use the 900 motor. Um, okay so this is an 07 I think I think it's an 07 last year carbureted uh, Thruxton, I think, or maybe 08 was right around there. Um, nice bike, low miles, but uh, it has an old battery in it. The charging system we just replaced in our previous video showing how to do a stator and a regulator, but we found while doing our charging system test, we have a really old crusty battery here. Now we're going to show how to install our bypass regulator system, but this made the demo uh, or kind of demoing the improvement even better because of how crappy this battery is and I'll show you why so we're gonna look at what the charging system puts out so this is a brand new charging system we just installed with our arm stator parts a new stator and voltage regulator and let's see what kind of voltage we get out of it so you can see this battery's old crusty terminals I haven't cleaned anything up on it um, it's always worked well for me but I've only had it a couple months and never looked at the charging system until now okay so we have, oh, I think I have the key on, so we're pulling it down, but at rest, about 12 volts on the battery. It's old, but it's not dead or anything. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the key on. Let's see what kind of voltage we get out of this brand new charging system. All right, we're idling at 12.2 volts. So with an unhealthy discharge battery, we hit about 13.5 volts. Um, so charging, it would work, it's not gonna strand you, but this thing clearly needs a new battery. However, let's look at what happens when we install our bypass regulator system. So what the bypass system does, especially on a bike like the Triumph, where they decided to run all of the wiring for the charging system through the bike's harness. So we have our stator connector coming up here. You can see it plugged in right here. Our stator plugs into the vehicle's harness here, and it goes all the way up the backbone of the frame. And Aaron, if you can come up here, we'll show our connection. Okay, comes all the way up here to our voltage regulator rectifier connector, which is right here running through the vehicle's uh, harness, plugs in, goes to our voltage regulator rectifier. Then it goes back out of the voltage regulator rectifier connector, all the way back, another three feet of wire, and is gonna connect back to our battery, um, and probably through the starter relay or something. So we have lots and lots of wire, we have old connections, um, and all of that stuff adds up for extra resistance and can help give us a really inefficient charging system. So when we go to our bypass regulator kit, this kit is using our CNC uh, housing series regulator, which is a tight fit, we'll show it up front, but it does fit okay and it looks nice on these bikes. Um, it plugs right into the stator connector and then we plug the output of the regulator directly into the battery terminals. So we bypass a lot of old wiring and old connections on this bike and we pick up a pretty big improvement at the battery. So before I show the um, whole installation, I'm just gonna connect this real quick so we can show these clips back to back and let's just see what happens with a new charging system but running through the vehicle's harness right back to back with our bypass regulator system. So I hooked up our bypass system real quick. Let's take a look at what kind of voltage we get now.
Okay, so not only do we start idling over 13 volts, but we're hitting over 14 volts at high RPM. So again, none of this is a shortcut for replacing a bad battery, but you can see the improvement right there just by eliminating the connections and wiring on the bike. All right, let's go ahead and get this system installed. So to install our system, it's really pretty simple. Um, we're gonna go ahead and remove our headlight. It's mounted with two Phillips head screws, one in each side. I've already removed them, so I'm just gonna pull it off. Set it down. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it because we're gonna need some access up here to mount the new regulator. So I'm gonna unplug the headlight right there, set it out of the way. Okay, now I'm going to find the regulator connector, which is this brick right here. It's got six positions in it, five wires, three black wires, a black red, and a black white. Going to disconnect it. Okay, then I'm going to loosen and remove the mounting bolts for the old regulator. They go right here, eight millimeter bolts. I already have them loose. Okay. That will let your uh, turn signal bracket hang loose and the regulator will drop down. Then you need to get enough access here to pull your regulator connector out of the back of the grommet of the headlight. So I did that right there. It's a tight fit. Just take your time and work the wires out. Okay. So that is all we need to do inside the headlight bucket. We're not gonna be using that any longer. So I'm gonna put the wire clamp back in place. I'm gonna plug the headlight back in. And I'm gonna hang the headlight back in place. Goes right up top, slides in, and then you get your two Phillips screws, one on each side. I'm just gonna put them in loosely to keep the headlight out of the way now, and I'll tighten them up later. Okay, so now we want to mount our new regulator and the harness. So let me switch sides here. Since most of the wiring for the vehicle runs on the left side, I'm gonna run the wiring for the bypass system on the right side of the bike. So I'm gonna have the harness plugged into the regulator and the connectors are color coded and keyed so you really can't do them wrong. I'm gonna slide that all the way through and let the wiring hang loose. Then I'm gonna kind of mock up the regulator in place. Now, it's a tight fit. The wiring from the regulator is gonna rest just under the wiring exiting the headlight bucket. It's tight, but it does fit. So I'm gonna hold it in place right there and I'm gonna get my mounting screws started. Now I still have some threads I have to repair on this bike, so I'm not gonna finish tightening this because I'm gonna have to remove it again. But I'll illustrate it. So you need to get the bolt through the regulator and the mounting bracket, and then lined up with the threads on the vehicle. Or on your, uh, your triple clamp, sorry. Okay, so there's one. Here's the other one. Okay. So once those are both in place, I'll get them started a little bit to hold this. There we go. Okay, and then on your finished install, you can go ahead and tighten those up. Make sure you route the wires nicely. Like I said, it is a tight fit here and they're gonna bend over right out of the connector but they're gonna fit okay. And Aaron, you should be able to show that from this side, maybe even back here. So it's a tight fit, but it does fit and work. And your wiring is gonna come down around this way. Okay, so next you're gonna wanna remove the gas tank. Let me get that set up and then we'll show you. So now we're gonna remove the gas tank. We have two eight millimeter bolts back here on the tail section. And I, I guess I didn't mention it before, but obviously you need your seat removed and uh, side panels. So we covered that in our complete stator and regulator install video, but your side panels are attached with one bolt, one uh, flathead bolt down here and two five millimeter Allen head bolts back here for your seat. So very easy to remove to get access to everything. On the gas tank, you need to remove your breather tube right here that just pulls off of a little fitting underneath the tank as you lift it up. We have our bolts removed, and then I removed the fuel line from the fuel tap over on this side of the bike. Okay, then you can just lift up the back of the tank, slide it backwards off of the rubber, and I'm gonna set it out of the way. 
Okay. So now we need to route our wire. Now it's up to you. You can do this lots of different ways. I set the length of the harness doing it something like this. I'm gonna run it right here along the side of the frame. I'm gonna go through the frame tube here because I can have a nice point to zip tie it up. And I'm gonna come over here. This will give me another nice point to tie the harness up. And then I'm gonna end up right back here near our stator connector and near the battery. So we're gonna need to disconnect our stator from the vehicle harness. Okay, which I did right here. Then we're gonna plug our stator connector right into our new harness connector. So that's making a direct connection now between our stator and the voltage regulator up front. Okay, now we have our two ring terminals that have to go directly to the battery. So I'm gonna need to look under here. This will be hard to show because there's just a lot of stuff in the way on this bike, but let me get them routed. So I'm gonna pass them through this hole in the frame. Uh, let's see here, I got one of them. And two of them, okay. So I'm gonna pass my battery terminal connections right through the hole in the frame. Leave my harness kind of here out of the way. We'll fine tune it later. And then we're gonna go ahead and connect it directly to the battery terminals. So I already had these loose. So you're gonna want to connect the black to the negative terminal and screw it back down. The red to the positive terminal and screw it back down. And then you're gonna want to uh, clean up your connections. So let me finish all this and make it look nice and then we'll show you the final routing. So we have everything installed. We're just gonna go over the whole system. We have our regulator mounted up here. We have our wires exiting up at the top here. They are routed right here along the side of the frame. And I secured them here to this frame uh, bracket over here to another bracket. Looks like that was for part of probably a mission system stuff that's been removed on this bike. That was a nice spot. Secured to another bracket here above the carburetor. And then we run down here into the airbox area. Now, one thing I wanna point out, this bike has pod filter conversion and the airbox removed. Uh, so I have some room down here to run wires. On a bike with a full airbox, you might have to route your wiring differently. So just pay attention, route it nicely for your setup. Um, and then I have my stator connection made right here to our new harness. And then my battery ring terminal cables are coming straight up here through the, the uh, backbone and are attached to the battery terminals. So that's our install. Now you would put your gas tank back on, your seat and all your other stuff, and you're ready to go ride with a really nice charging system. I am leaving this apart because I'm gonna put a new battery in it and clean up a few other things on the bike. So hope you liked it. Check out armstator.com and like and subscribe on our YouTube channel and we'll see you next time.